Thank you for joining our on-demand AIA continuing education course. My name is Mackenzie and I'm an architectural liaison for ArmorLite. This course will last one hour in length and we'll have a 10 question quiz at the end. Any questions on this course can be directed to me via email or phone. My contact information will be on the last slide. Attendance for this course will be submitted within 10 days and certificates of completion are available upon request. Okay, let's get started. This course will explain the energy conservation benefits to an overhead sectional door with an ADA compliant pass door. We will go over how to specify and design your building to incorporate this product. Upon completion of this course, you will be able to properly specify an overhead sectional door with an ADA compliant pass door, maximize energy efficiency in space with an ADA compliant man door overhead door system, Identify scenarios where an integrated man door can improve the building envelope's energy efficiency while meeting local egress codes, and solve real estate challenges where a property requires an overhead door for large items to pass through and also requires an ADA egress, but there is not enough space for both. So since this is an introductory course, we will explain a little bit about what an overhead sectional door is and how it works. An overhead sectional door is an upward acting door that is hinged together horizontally in sections. An overhead door works on a tra track system like you typically see on a residential garage. These doors are being seen more and more frequently on commercial projects for a unique open air design and to load objects in and out of the building. These doors can be manufactured in many different ways, with custom layouts, glazing, and finishes that make each door unique. Moving forward into what our program is all about. Saving space and energy by incorporating one of these systems into your project. This product solves many space and egress issues when real estate is at a premium and every inch of space is valuable. Some may use this product because they like the option of opening the overhead door on nice weather days, but also want the option to close the overhead door and just use the man door as the public egress. Others incorporate this product because they are short on space. A business may need an entrance to load large objects in and out of, and also need an ADA entry required by code. This product allows for both. Also, in climates where energy efficiency is important via warm or cold air conservation, an overhead sectional door with an integrated entry door will help the valuable warm or cold air inside the building by only having to open the entry door to enter or exit the building. The ADA compliant pass door was created for architects and designers. Architects kept inquiring about a product like this, so the overhead door industry listened and created the overhead sectional door with an ADA compliant pass door. Before this product was available, the only pass door on the market was a, a four inch step over pass door. The pass door has a four inch bottom rail posing a tripping hazard for the public. This type of pass door is to never be used in a public setting.
Now we'll go into how to properly specify an overhead sectional door with an integrated pass door. There are many different options and knowing which works best for your project is important. This product will have restrictions on dimensions. The minimum width of the overhead door is 8 foot and the maximum will have to be at 10 foot 2. This is to uphold the structural integrity of the door. The minimum height of the overhead door must be 9 foot and the maximum is 14 foot 0 inches. The headroom, which is the space between the top of your door opening and the nearest obstruction, whether that be a ceiling or duct or a lighting fixture, is a crucial measurement needed when planning for an overhead door. This space is where your springs and track will mount to. Your headroom will determine the type of track that will be used. Any overhead door with an ADA pass door requires a minimum of 24 inches of headroom. When you have 24 to 36 inches of headroom, a standard lift track will be used. If there is more than 36 inches of headroom, you would then specify a high lift track. If you have the space and want the door to open vertically up the wall, you would specify a vertical lift track. This requires a headroom measurement of the door height plus 12 inches. The next type of track that can be used with this product is a roof pitch. This is used when the ceiling pitches upward. No overhead sectional door can work on a ceiling that slopes downward. The last type of track that can be used is a double bend radius. This is when there are multiple pitches in the roof. Another dimension you'll need to know is the side room. This is the measurement on both sides of the overhead door where the track will mount to. When you have one single overhead door, you will need a minimum of five and a half inches on both sides of the door for the tracks to mount. If you have two doors side by side, you will need 11 inches in between both doors and five and a half on the edge of the door. We wanted to show you drawings for how the track types are detailed. The track type in this drawing is standard lift. You should specify a standard lift track if you have anywhere from 24 to 36 inches of headroom. When using this type of track, you need a measurement of the opening height plus 4 foot 3 back into the space for the horizontal tracks and the motor to mount, as you can see in this drawing. If you have a 10 foot high door, you will need a clear 14 foot 3 inches back into the space. The drawing in this slide details a high lift track. When you have 36 inches of headroom or more, you should specify a high lift track. A high lift track requires less back room because you're going higher up the front wall and less back into the space. This drawing details a full vertical lift track. This type of track requires the headroom to be the door height plus 12 inches. So for a 10 foot high door, you will need 11 feet of headroom. A full vertical lift track requires 18 inches back into the space. This photo shows the roof pitch track. This, the last type of track that can be used is the double bend radius. As you can see, it bends once here and then again here. This is good to accommodate multiple pitches in your roof. If you are unsure if your conditions will work with this type of product or you don't know which track to use, consult with the overhead door manufacturer or an overhead door professional. Okay, now we'll move on to the finish options for these doors. There are infinite amounts of finish options out there when designing overhead doors. Anodized finishes are typically the most cost effective and common finishes in the overhead door industry. Clear anodized, black anodized, and custom anodized finishes are available. There are so many types of custom painted, fi painted finishes available on the market. Metallic and non-metallic finishes, you can custom color match to storefronts, window frames, anything that, that you need to match. Powder coated finishes are also available with the overhead sectional doors, and you can choose any color off the RAL chart. Another nice touch to the finish and design of the door is powder coating the tracks and face hardware. The track and face hardware is usually galvanized steel, so adding this really puts a nice touch on your door. So 8th inch clear tempered glass is the standard in most cases. This glazing is good for service stations, neutral temp zones, and clients who may not be interested in an energy efficient or insulated door. 5 8 and 1 inch insulated glass units are also available. All glazing units will have a value associated with them, and that's going to determine how energy efficient they are. Going from a non-insulated unit to an insulated unit can really affect the values on the glass. 
For example, a clear 5 8 insulated unit has a U value of 0.5 and a solar heat gain coefficient of 0.76. When you move to a 1-inch insulated glass unit, that's going to have a value of 0.49 and a solar heat gain coefficient of 0.76. If these values don't meet what you need, there are many different options out there that will get you a higher value, such as low E coatings. When you take a 5 8 insulated glass unit with a low E coating, the U value goes to 0.32 and the solar heat gain coefficient is 0.4. The 1-inch insulated glass unit with a low E coating has a U value of 0.31 and a solar heat gain coefficient of 0.40. The ADA pasture relief will have to contain non-insulated glass units such as eighth inch clear tempered, eighth inch polycarbonate, and quarter inch, po quarter inch polycarbonate. Carbonate, plexiglass, perforated panels, and wire mesh panels are available in these overhead doors. You can also use solid non-insulated and insulated panels. The insulated panels are light enough to be used in the past door leaf. Insulated rails and styles when used in conjunction with insulated glazing will help tremendously with energy efficiency. There are so many options available as far as panels go. These panels are often seen on parking garages or other applications that may need a higher airflow. If you are using these panels for an aesthetic aspect, you can also add a solid panel behind for a more private or secure option. Perforated panels are available in circle, square, hexagonal, slotted, and also decorative designs. Custom perforations are also available based on design, hole size, and airspace requirements. Mesh panels are great for applications that need increased airflow or visibility. Mesh panel designs include diamond, square, weave, and fine weave. Custom mesh panels are also available if needed. Stamped aluminum panels can add texture and dimension to the look of an overhead sectional door. Some examples of a stamped panel design include beaded, stucco, and wood grain. Custom stamped panels are also available. Louver panels can be used in an overhead door as either fixed or operable. Operable louvers can be opened and closed to allow or restrict ventilation, whereas fixed or stamped louvers are available to help with ventilation. Stamp louvers are created using an aluminum sheet with slots that cannot be closed. Consult with your overhead door manufacturer to see your options for incorporating panel designs into your project. Okay, so I wanted to bring in Shannon. She is our in-house design consultant. She knows a lot about all the different glass options and the different things you can put in these doors. So she's going to kind of go over all of that with you now. Hey there, Mackenzie. Thank you so much for inviting me in today to talk about the garage door industry and all of the literally infinite glass selections that are available. It's hard to believe Basically, an architect can dream up a look and we'll find he, him, or her a glass to fit that design criteria. The first sample I'd like to share with everybody today is our sample number 227. This selection is a temperable option, so safety's covered. And it's a nice vertical pattern and it's got some nice chevron designs running in fluted patterns. A gorgeous option and it can be used entirely in a door or as an accent piece in conjunction with other samples. Sample 62 is a great example when you want a design treatment that has just a little bit of frosting to it but it's mostly clear. It's got a vertical pattern to it. Very nice selection. That would probably be good for someone who wants a design element, but not something that's too overpowering, taking away from the door. Right. It's very delicate Yes, I agree. and temperable, Mackenzie. So we have safety going for us now. Great. Sample 171 is, a, is another example of it's a very subtle pattern and it's not overpowering, yet it's got so much detail in the design. So I can imagine where there are many instances this would be gorgeous. And it's odd. It's got a very scalloped interior, which is really fascinating. Sample 63 
is another unique example of a moderate amount of frosting or obscurity. It's got a very delicate, almost polka dot look. That's It's actually when you feel on the interior of the glass, it's got a very rough texture to it, but yet smooth on the outside. Gorgeous. Nice choice. Sample 126 has an interesting vertical pattern, and it, while having that medium level of opacity, gives a very interesting linear effect. So if you're going for something to accentuate or even contrast, giving you some vertical lines, this is a great selection. Mackenzie, sample 123 is one of my favorites. This is another one that's got that vertical accentuation of pattern going, and on the interior of the, the glass has a scalloped design. It's very unusual. It is interesting. And it is, and, and look at that. Uh, you can, it's, it's, it's kind of clear, actually. Very little uh, obscurity going on it, but it just got a very interesting, it distorts the image of whatever's on the other side. And I wonder, there's so many different things that come to mind. Um, very modern buildings and contrasting angles that could be like combined with metal that could be really gorgeous. I do see a note here on this one. It's available only in low iron. So I don't know if you've ever seen a, most glass has like a green hue to it. Mm -hmm. That's the the iron in the glass that your the eyes picking up on. A lot of people don't like that green look. So that's when they'll ask that the iron be taken out of the glass and that's called low iron. This this particular pattern is only available in low iron. So we'll have to remember that. Yeah, that looks really really nice. Definitely. I Gorgeous. like that one. Mackenzie sample 67. Again, this is just one of my favorites. Instantly fell in love with this design. To me it looks like little slots in the glass and I had to actually touch it to make sure the holes didn't go all the way through. It's got a very airy feel and I think that that's I guess the intent when this glass was designed. Gorgeous. So it's a horizontal pattern and it's broken as you can see into inch, approximately an inch wide little slots, maybe a, an eighth of quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch thick little slots. Again, you have to hand it to these glass designers. They've come up with everything that you can possibly imagine. And here's one, just when you think you've seen it all, bam, they come out with this. So this next glass is kind of similar to the one that we looked at before. This is glass sample number 61. Instead of having those lines, this is more of like a dot or bubble look to it. When you hold it up, it kind of does look like there's actual holes in the glass too. This is really interesting and it doesn't add too much of a design to the door, but it gives it a little bit more than just plain glass. We're seeing this design come up, Mackenzie, more and more and more. And I'm wondering if it can't also be used as a bird glass so that the birds don't fly into the glass. There are many dot patterns that are being used today. I was actually thinking about that on one of the other glass samples that we looked at, that I wonder if these could be used for that, and I think that they could. Yeah, I don't see why not. So, Mackenzie, in looking at these patterns, uh, sample 63... Sample 61, and we talked about the bird glass and how it could possibly be used for bird glass because there are certain patterns that are out there that are tagged as bird glass. It reminded me of a project that we did, and it was on a beach area resort, and they actually used, they referred to it as turtle glass. Really? And apparently the glass had to have a certain amount of low reflective qualities or high reflective, something that would prevent the turtles from being confused during their mating season when they were going back to the ocean. If they got turned around, it could be devastating for them. 
Wow, that's really interesting. I never knew that something like that existed. So the next class that I want to go over is sample number 64. It's kind of similar to the one that we just looked at, but instead of being clear, it actually has a silver painted back. This looks really cool and it would be interesting to have this maybe on the bottom section or around the edges in conjunction with the other glass that we just looked at. It gives it a solid feature but also has a design. It's really, really neat. That is cool. It's like a metallic foil or something, isn't it? Yeah. That is beautiful, Mackenzie. And they've picked up that same little dot pattern that you saw in pattern 61. Wow, it looks so different back painted with this design, this metallic. And you can get any color that you can virtually think of for the back painted glasses. There's so many different options available. It's not just, you know, your typical silver, white, black. There's a lot of different options available for that. Good to know. All right, now while we're on the topic of painted back glass, here are some other options available. As you can see in this first one, it is like a silver metallic finish. And then next is like a really cool copper gold. Like I said, this would be interesting to see on maybe like a bottom section or around the pastor and have the pastor be clear glass or a glass that's tinted. There's so many different options available. Like I said, you really can choose any type of color that you can think of. It's available. Those are gorgeous. And a lot of people will carry the section height and line up with maybe an adjacent storefront material. So you can carry on your design for the rest of the building in this garage door too. And it makes an impressive system. You feel like, you feel the integration. Exactly. And also these glasses, this glass here is really good for interior applications. It can be used for, you can use whiteboard markers on there. So that's great for conference rooms, classrooms, things like that. This glass, you know, gives you a lot of capabilities. It's great. I make this. Hey, Mackenzie, I just saw something that I know you're going to love. And it's a glass that can be used in these ADA compliant pass doors and any other glass and aluminum garage doors. Fantastic. Have you ever seen the blinds that are in between two pieces of glass? Yeah. I just saw availability of a one inch insulated unit with horizontal blinds inside of it. You'll never have to clean those blinds. And they have a nice little lever to open and close the blinds. Perfect for a conference room. Perfect for a residential application. I can just see so many reasons to use this new product. Now, is there only one color available for the blinds or is there different options? There are several gorgeous colors. So maybe what we can do is share a video on what this actually looks like in a few minutes. Yeah, that sounds great. Hey, Mackenzie, new to the industry, is a product, it's known by di different names, but I've heard it most recently called Instafrost. It's fantastic. With the flip of a switch, your conference room door or your divider door goes from clear glass to frosted mm -hmm. glass. It's gorgeous. I've seen that on like shower stalls and things like that. Is it kind of like the same thing? It, it must be along those same lines. This one is the first I've ever seen in a garage door. Fantastic. It's really interesting and I feel like that may be good for like if it's on a storefront for at night to do the frosted so you can't really see into the building when no one is there. Yes. I heard that they're possibly using it in schools along with the blinds for privacy options and I thought what a fantastic idea. That is a really great thing. I like that. All right, now that we've talked about all these cool different glass options that are available, I think that maybe we should talk a little bit about the insulated glass units and all the benefits that we have when including an insulated glass unit in an overhead door. I agree. Today's energy conscious America is promoting use of insulated glass whenever there's an opportunity. Well, the great news is every single one of these gorgeous glass options we just reviewed can all be available in an insulated unit. Really? Yes, and the biggest unit 
up to one inch. So five eighths is probably the most common and one inch when you need that extra insulation value. Now, are there low E coatings and things like that available? Those obviously help with the energy and insulation and things like that, right? Yes, as a matter of fact, there's low E options to maximize the efficiency. Argon in the units is a real helpful tool. And as a matter of fact, it's endless the, the amount of different low E's and gases that are on the market today. Argons tend to get the best test results from the, the reviews that I've read. It's interesting. It seems like there's a lot of different options available as far as insulated glass units go. Yes, we were just working in our industry with a fire department that's very prevalent in the Northeast. And one of the things that we found by interviewing all of these locations of fire departments across the country is there's a concern about the fading of the red fire trucks. Apparently the color red is the biggest fading color just about that they've ever seen. They kind of turn pink over time. So you figure these fire trucks are multi-million dollar pieces of equipment and it's a concern. They don't, the owners of these facilities don't want to have their prized possession, these fire trucks, fade with time. So there are products on the market that can be also used either monolithically or in an in, uh, insulated unit that will block 99% of the UV rays that actually fade these colors. So now we're getting fire departments that are specifying this type of glass and it can be used in, in this same type of product. And also you can use tents. There's reflective versions of this UV blocker glass and also now art galleries are specifying this product as well. And then I've just recently seen galleries going to low iron uh, UV blocker glass, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous addition in a very upscale, high profile art gallery. All right, now I want to get into the different types of panels that you can have in these doors. There's so many different options, but I'm just going to show you a couple. So the first two here kind of look similar. The one on the left is called, it's a Sheffield pattern. And then the one on the right is also Sheffield, but it's more of a bold look. The one on the left is going to have a more muted pattern. And the one on the right is going to be more defined. I wouldn't so much call it as diamond, but it has a little bit of that shape to the pattern. And you can get these panels in any color. They can be finished to match the frame, or you can leave them just the mill finish as well if you'd like. This panel here is a stucco finish. This would probably be nice in like a, like a light brown or a finish like that, but it really is versatile. You can kind of use it anywhere. It gives it more of a texture than just plain, but not too much or overwhelming. I like it. Looks good. So this next one is wood grain. This is, I feel like, a very classic texture. You see this a lot on like residential garage doors and things like that. So if you want that look, incorporating a wood grain panel, you know, would be a good idea. I like that. So this next panel is a raise. It could either be used in vertical or in horizontal, whichever way you want it set in the door. These panels also can all be insulated if you need that. Mackenzie, this is gorgeous. This is a sample 6 OM. It's a beaded look. So it's a stamped panel, with they, they refer to it as a beaded design. And if you run your fingers over it, you can feel like it's like little bumps. It's so good looking though, and I can see a lot of different applications where this would be very, very conversation provoking. And from a distance, it really does show up nicely. Yeah, it almost looks very dimensional. It does, yes. Good choice. 
Mackenzie, I'm looking at this sample and the name of it is called Treadflex, but it reminds me of like a diamond plate pattern. Isn't this cool? Yeah, it's what you kind of see on like toolboxes and stuff like that. It is. And it's also, I'm seeing it a lot in certain instance, instances for door kick plates. It really sets off an industrial chic feel to a project. As a matter of fact, let's talk about industrial chic for a few minutes. All right. These products are perfect when you're designing, um, could be use of beams, wood in conjunction with stone, metal. I've seen so many different combinations of materials, but the architects are looking for an industrial chic kind of a feel. And it almost seems like there's nothing that's off limits to create this effect. These panels though, perfect, perfect for this revolution that's going on in the design world. I definitely agree and you know the industrial look of the exposed track and the steel hardware that's you know you're seeing that a lot more these days isn't it funny how for so many years our challenges were how do we hide these tracks how do we make the garage door not look like a garage door now it's just the opposite so Mackenzie I'm looking here at the Windsor pattern panel right now and it's it's very subtle and it's got a almost a little chevron pattern but it's a satiny finish and it's ever so slight that you see this stamping in this panel absolutely going for subtlety this is your this is your pattern I would highly recommend using this so this next one here has a leather grain look to it. It's really interesting and it kind of looks upscale to me. That would look nice in like a black or maybe like a, a metallic bronze color. What do you think, Shannon? It's gorgeous. Yeah, I love that. Welded wire. Mesh panel made of wire that's literally like a fabric made of wire. I'm seeing it everywhere and it is being used in ways that I never thought possible. Have you seen this around and coming to the forefront? I have. I've seen it a lot on like loading docks and things like that, but you're seeing it more on other applications too. I just saw it in a restaurant. It had a real like westerny kind of rough sawn feel to it. And the designer introduced wire cloth and I thought, my goodness, what a cool, innovative way to use this material. How would you use something like that on a finished space? Is there something that you can put on the back, like on the interior of the door? or? Well, you've raised a really, really great subject now because one of the things I wanted to talk about a little today is flood vents because of hurricane flooding that's coming up the coastal areas all around, actually around the entire coastal United States, I can speak to this. There's a huge demand for materials in a garage door, at least on, say, for example, the bottom section that is open or will allow water to pass through to keep that garage door from collapsing. And then, because once the garage door collapses, the wind sweeps through the house, and that's what causes the actual collapse in many cases during a hurricane. So if you can gently let the water in and cause a little balance, it can actually save, save the whole home. And a wire mesh pattern in the bottom section, I have seen people use that and leave it as an open kind of situation. I've also seen people put using it as a design element, we'll put it glass on one side of it. And so they'll actually combine this wire mesh with glass so that, you know, it is airproof and they get, you know, some insulation value and so forth, but it carries on a design treatment. And these perforated panels, there's just literally thousands of designs. 
Have you seen anybody use these with like a solid panel on the back? Do you think that you would know, look? You know, I have. Um, I actually saw them have the panel one color and then the wire mesh another color to really show it off. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Yeah, it was good looking. I, I had never, that was a first, and I can see where I would recommend that in certain cases. But getting back to the flood vents, did you know that we can put flood vents in these this model product that we're talking about today? I did not. Yeah, flood vents are an amazing architectural product. And we are right in the middle of a, a real awareness in this country of hurricanes and the flooding associated with hurricanes. And then you have just good old fashioned flooding caused by excessive rain or melting of snow and the rivers get full and overflow. So there's a lot of things going on with flood vents, but know this, we've got your back when you need flood vents. It's, we have been using these successfully for several years, but I've never seen the amount of demand that's coming through it. And I asked a, a, a co-worker what, where she felt this was all coming from, believe it or not, from all the studies that she's been reading, the insurance companies are requiring the people that own these buildings to have some sort of escape for water or actually to let the water into the building, just like we were just talking about. And the flood vents, they do it. And they're not, they're not a bad looking product. And I think that's been the hindrance for years and years. There was nothing that looked presentable enough to be used in an architectural product like this. Now, can the flood vent vents be finished to match the frame of the door? What what color are they? Excellent question. They're st anything from a standard, a black, a white, a something to be you know to match with a clear anodized door. But to answer your question, yes, 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 yes. Any custom color that you want, these can be finished to match. And they really are an amazing. I was stunned to see them in action. It's a nice product. And a nice addition to the garage door product line in our industry. Yeah, I definitely agree. Well, I want to say thank you to Shannon for hopping on and kind of going over all of this with me. And, you know, if there's any questions after this presentation, just feel free to contact us and we will go over all the different glass options that are available. Another benefit to insulated rails and styles is the minimization of water infiltration. There is no sectional door on the market presently that completely eliminates water infiltration. All rail and style aluminum doors leak where the rails and styles are butted together. Insulating the rails and styles will not eliminate water infiltration and you still may get water leakage in a driving rain and the product should never be power washed. However, insulating the rails and styles of your overhead door will make a big impact on preventing water infiltration. Architects and designers con should consider these facts when using overhead doors in your finished specs, especially when designing a conditioned space. There are two materials that can be used to insulate your overhead sectional door, polystyrene and polyurethane. Polyurethane is a polymer composed of organic units joined by urethane links. Polyurethane is sprayed into each panel and expands to all sides of the extrusion, causing it to be airtight. Polystyrene is a synthetic polymer made from the monomer styrene, which is also known as styrofoam. It is a brittle white material and does not fit as tightly into the extrusions and will not reach all sides of the extrusion like the polyurethane, causing air pockets. An overhead sectional door with an ADA compliant pass door has a 12 gauge 3 inch track. Like stated previously, this type of overhead door needs a minimum of 24 inches of headroom. When you have more than 36 inches of headroom, your track will move to a high lift track. If you would like to use a full vertical lift track, you will need the door height plus one foot. The headroom is one of the most important details in an overhead sectional door, so be sure to have this information included in your specs. Another option to consider is specifying higher cycle springs that have a longer cycle life, which is a benefit if your overhead door opens more than usual. If you have a loading dock door, warehouse doors, or doors that open more than twice per day, 
you may want to consider higher cycle springs. 10,000 cycle springs are the standard. 25,000, 50,000, and 100,000 cycle springs are also available. Consult with your overhead door manufacturer to see if high cycle springs will work for your project. The standard hardware on the pass door will have an exterior keyed lock and an interior thumb turn latch, closer, and closer plate. The low profile handles can be finished to match the door frame. Panic hardware is also available if required by code. Custom handles are also typically offered if requested. Every municipality, state, and county, etc. has varying ADA compliance regulations. It is a responsibility of the architect or designer to confirm if standard hardware will, will work for your project or if code requires panic hardware. Corrosion and rust resistant options for overhead sectional doors are available for applications in high moisture or corrosive environments. In harsh environments, standard steel garage doors corrode and rust, resulting in an ugly appearance, unsafe operation, and shortened product life. Tracks and face hardware of the doors can be powder coated in standard black or white. Custom colors are also available. Powder coated steel components are not as resistant to corrosives as stainless steel. However, they do offer greater protection of these parts than standard galvanized. Rust resistant stainless steel tracks, face hardware, stainless steel nylon rollers with steel bearings and stainless steel cables can also be supplied in lieu of standard galvanized components to resist corrosion breakdown of parts. We will now discuss the motor operator requirements for these products. An overhead sectional door with an ADA compliant pass door requires a motor for a few different reasons. Another important note would be that most overhead door installers will not install the wiring or wiring conduit on any project that requires a motor operator. This is the responsibility of an electrician so please be sure your general contractor is aware of this. You will also need to include the voltage and phase of your building on the spec so that the overhead door manufacturer or installer can determine which motor is needed. A trolley type operator will be used with a standard lift track, which is 24 to 36 inches of headroom. A trolley type operator is mounted overhead and pulls the door open by an attachment on the top section of the overhead door. A LiftMaster Model T is an example of an operator that can be used. A jack shaft operator is used for a high lift and vertical lift track systems, which is a headroom measurement of 36 inches or more. The jack shaft operator is mounted on the side of the opening near the springs. The door is lifted by cranking the shaft. A jack shaft operator does require additional side room, so please consult with your overhead door manufacturer on just how much is needed based on your specific project conditions. A LiftMaster Model J is an example of an operator that can be used. The standard accessories and components to these operators include a set of photo eyes and a three button station with open close stop buttons. Additional accessories include a pass door interlock switch, which is mandatory for an overhead door with an ADA compliant pass door and will be explained in further detail in the next slide. Key lockout. This requires a key to unlock the motor's three button station. This is good for public settings like a school, restaurant, and retail locations where a manager maintenance person holds the key to open the door. Remote controls do not come standard with commercial operators, so be sure to specify that remotes are needed if necessary. Heavy duty and corrosion resistant operators are also available. The pass door interlock switch stops the overhead door from opening when the pass door is ajar. The pass door interlock switch is a very important feature and should be used whenever installing an overhead door with an ADA pass door. Not including this can cause serious injury and property damage. Electrical contacts are connected to the operable part of the pass door and the overhead door frame. When the contacts are touching, the motor senses that it is safe to open the overhead door and will become unlocked. Once the contacts are broken, the pass door interlock switch sends a signal to the operator to lock into place. All overhead doors should have a maintenance plan. One of the major factors in how often you should have your commercial overhead door serviced is how often you use it. Many loading dock and warehouse doors get used very often, opening several times a day, whereas other commercial overhead doors may be open one or two times a day. If your commercial door is used once or less a day, an annual service should be sufficient and will keep the door running smoothly. Applications that may need an annual service include retail and restaurant applications.
However, if your door is being used more regularly, two or more times a day, then the door should be serviced by a licensed and insured overhead door company quarterly. Fire stations, service stations, and warehouses require quarterly services. The importance of hiring an experienced and insured overhead door company cannot be stressed enough. The right company will assess the way you use your commercial door and the risks you may be subject to and will create a service plan that matches your needs. Commercial garage doors that are not properly maintained and serviced are left vulnerable to security and operational risks. With regular service from a professional commercial door repair company, you can ensure smooth and safe operation. I want to share some case studies from industry professionals that may help you get a feel for when and where a product like this would work. The first case we will go over is the John Bon Jovi Soul Kitchen. This product was done in Red Bank, New Jersey in 2011. John Bon Jovi and the JBJ Soul Foundation turned an old mechanic shop into a restaurant. They created this restaurant with the mission that they would provide three-course meals to anyone in the community regardless of their economic status. The menu has no prices and diners at the restaurant can pay the minimum donation or pay more to feed another diner if they can afford it. The JBJ Soul Kitchen also offers volunteer opportunities to help patrons pay for their meals. John Bon Jovi and his wife, Dorothea, wanted the restaurant to feel inviting and liked the idea of utilizing the three existing mechanic bays to incorporate glass and aluminum overhead doors. The space was small and would not have enough space for the three overhead doors and an ADA-compliant entryway. This is when they decided they would use the overhead door with an ADA-compliant pass-through door on one of the bays. John's wife chose a custom Cafe Noir finish, a pearlescent, subtle metallic color, and non-insulated safety glazing. For instances where a client may decide they do not want or need insulated glazing, a heat or air curtain can be installed. This blows warm or cold air in front of the overhead door to help eliminate the effects of the elements. The second case was at a winery in Arrington, Tennessee, about 30 miles from Nashville in September of 2018. The winery held events frequently and used a large covered tent as one of their event spaces. A tornado came through the area, sweeping the tent away. The owners of the vineyard then decided to build a structurally sound pavilion that would incorporate 13 overhead sectional doors that would close off all of the sides of the pavilion. The overhead doors were the only means of egress, which posed an issue with codes. The owners of the vineyard decided that an overhead door with an ADA-compliant pass-through door was the perfect solution to their egress problems. One door on each side of the pavilion was converted to an ADA compliant pass door. They decided on a black anodized finish to match the trim and their logo on the building. They also opted to powder coat all of the interior face hardware and track black to match the frame of the doors. The installer on this project explained the many challenges that they were faced with and were able to overcome. One challenge on the project was matching up all of the sight lines on the doors even though there were different sizes and heights. As you can see in these photos, all of the sight lines did match up. Another issue they were met with was how to engineer the track system of the four corner doors. As we know, these doors need a clear back room for the horizontal track to mount to, which means one door on each corner of the building would have to be eliminated. The overhead door manufacturer's engineering team worked to find a solution to this problem by incorporating a lower track system for the two front doors as you can see in this photo. The last case study we will go over was for a new construction Starbucks in Austin, Texas in August of 2018. This particular Starbucks had an outdoor indoor patio incorporated into it. The architect working on the project wanted to incorporate overhead sectional doors to open up the patio when the weather was nice. Again, due to code issues, an ADA compliant entrance door needed to be incorporated into this patio space. The patio space was long and narrow, leaving virtually no room anywhere to incorporate this entry door. A standard overhead sectional door was installed on one end of the patio, and the other end of the patio incorporated the overhead sectional door with a pass door. Because these overhead doors were installed on a patio where the general public would have access to, the general contractor opted to install a clear lockbox over the three-button station to prevent any of the customers from opening and closing the door. This is another option similar to the keyed lockout. The next project I wanted to show is the Emily Morgan Hotel in San Antonio, Texas. The aesthetics of the existing building had an older classic look to it. 
The architect and the owner of the hotel wanted to keep the same look throughout the entire hotel. Full view glass and aluminum overhead doors tend to look modern and many think that they, are, they may not match the aesthetic of their building or project, but that is not the case. Sectional overhead doors, even when you incorporate an ADA compliant pass-through door, can be customized to your building. The architect working on this particular project wanted the door to have more rails and styles than we typically see in these doors. The manufacturer used lights that were not truly divided to create this look. The pastor leaf had smaller lights and the outside panels of the door had larger lights. This door also had a custom gray finish with the face hardware finish to match. Non-insulated frosted glass and non-insulated panels were used. The next case study is on a warehouse that incorporated two of these overhead sectional doors with ADA compliant pass doors. The manufacturing warehouse was not well insulated and had multiple large loading docks that were used many times a day. The loading dock was closed off from the main manufacturing plant with a standard overhead door. The overhead door leading from the plant to the loading dock was opening multiple times a day or just being left open due to many pickups and deliveries throughout the day. Because of the poor insulation in the plant, there was a great deal of heat loss and heat gain anytime the door was opened. The manufacturing plant decided to incorporate an overhead door with a pass door to eliminate the times the big overhead door was opened. The employees were able to enter the loading dock through the pass door when loading smaller items and only having to open the large overhead door when bringing larger items through. Another issue the manufacturing plant faced was the poor insulation in the hardware department. This room had a small heater on the wall and experienced a lot of heat loss due to the room not being completely closed off. The main water line pipe was in the hardware department and froze over one day. The wall needed major construction and the pipe had to be replaced because it was not fixable. The manufacturing plant had to do something to close this room off and keep the heat from the small heater in the room. They decided to incorporate an overhead door with an ADA pass door so they were able to roll their hardware carts through the pass door and open the overhead door should any larger boxes or items need to pass through. They were able to keep the room warm enough for the employees and also prevent the main water line from freezing. Hey Shannon, can my pass door be located on the left or right panel? I also wanted to swing into the interior of the building. Very good question, Mackenzie. Actually, both of them were very good questions. And the pass door needs to be located on the center of the overhead door, and it must swing out to the exterior. So if your door has an even amount of panels, say it was a 10 foot wide door, four panels wide, you would pick one of the center panels, either center left, or center right. I hope that's helped. Oh yeah, definitely. I have another question for you. My opening is 11 foot wide by 8 foot high. Will this work? Wow, you're asking a lot of good questions today and I'm glad that you've got this many projects that you're working on. This is fantastic. And as a matter of fact, unfortunately, the answer is no to this one. The max width for an overhead door with this model pass door <coughs> is 10 foot 2 wide and the minimum width is 8 foot wide and with regard to the height of your overhead door it'll need to be at least 9 foot high so this way you can have also a door as high as 14 so 9 is your minimum height 14 your maximum height 10 to your minimum width or 8 foot pardon me your minimum width and 10 to is your max I'm hoping these guidelines will be helpful. Um, do you have other projects that I could help you with that are looking at this type of project? Yeah, actually I do. I have a, um, a project that has about 24 inches of headroom. What type of track would I use with that? Awesome. This is right exactly where you need to be. So good job with that headroom scenario. This 24 inches of headroom, which is the minimum amount that you'll need with this ADA compliant pass door, is called standard lift track and standard lift track is the most common one that we use in this industry however if you find yourself with 36 inches 
or more of headroom, be sure to specify what we call a high lift track. If you're wanting the overhead door to open horizontally up, don't read that part, Shannon. Great question, Mackenzie. You're getting all the good projects and great job specifying that 24 inches of headroom because that's the minimum amount that we'll be able to use for this ADA compliant pass door. And we call this standard lift track. Not to worry, if you find that you have 36 inches of headroom or more, be sure to specify what we call a high lift track. And if you're wanting that overhead door to open vertically up that wall, you'll need to specify a full vertical lift track. And this will require a minimum headroom requirement of from floor to ceiling, the door height plus 12 inches. So keep that little rule of thumb handy and be sure to give that requirement uh, another thought. You can also specify a roof pitch track, and in some cases I've even seen a double bend radius if your roof pitches in more than one location. Okay, I think I understand now. Thanks for clarifying. So if I'm going to specify a door with insulated glass, can the pass door leaf have the insulated glass too? Well, as a matter of fact, in most cases, we will specify this pass door leaf to contain a non-insulated glazing. We'll have it match your other door glass, so your, your client will be happy oh. that it's a completely streamlined look. You'll never know that the glass in that pass door leaf is not insulated. And a lot of people say, well, why would you do that? Well, the reason being is we want to keep that pass door leaf as light as possible. So we'll engineer each project so that the client gets the maximum lifespan out of this product. So that's why we do it. That makes a lot of sense. Um, this project also has a sloping bottom. Can I use an ADA pass door with this type of floor? Wow, that is a challenging scenario there. And as a matter of fact, we do offer sloping bottom bars in the industry for several other overhead doors, but unfortunately, there's no way to do this type of ADA compliant pass door in our industry with an uneven floor. So if your client can level that floor out for us, we can connect you with an ADA compliant pass door that'll work well beyond their expectations. Great, and is that because of the threshold on the, on the bottom of the door? That's exactly right. That threshold has to be plumb and level with the floor, and you nailed it. That's the exact reason that this has to be, this condition has to be met. Okay. And I just have one more question for you. Can this um, overhead door with the ADA compliant pastor door be manually operated? Wow, another good one. And as a matter of fact, I'm really glad you brought this up because this ADA compliant pass door, it must be motorized. It's a safety reasoning behind it. And we won't really go into all of those reasons right now, but suffice it to say, you will need a motor operator to operate this product along with a pass door interlock switch. Okay, well I think you answered all of my questions. I really appreciate it, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you so much for joining our course, ADA entrance door and an overhead door, how to maximize space and energy savings. My name is Mackenzie and any questions can be directed to me via phone or email. Please use the password found in the presentation to complete the 10-question quiz.